In the Deep Space Nine episode, For the Cause, Michael Eddington betrays Starfleet, the Federation, and Captain Sisko by stealing a shipment of industrial replicators and defecting to the Maquis. Near the end of the episode, there is a dialogue between Captain Sisko and Eddington that I would like to explore. So let's get right into it then. I know you. I was like you once. But then I opened my eyes. Open your eyes, Captain. Why is the Federation so obsessed with the Maquis? We've never harmed you. And yet we're constantly arrested and charged with terrorism. Starships chase us through the Badlands, and our supporters are harassed and ridiculed. Why? Because we've left the Federation, and that's the one thing you can't accept. Nobody leaves Paradise. Everyone should want to be in the Federation. Hell, you even want the Cardassians to join. You're only sending them replicators because one day they can take their rightful place on the Federation Council. You know, in some ways, you're even worse than the Borg. Do you think that Michael Eddington's statement is true here? Is the Federation really worse than the Borg when it comes to the Maquis? I mean, he does have a valid point. The Maquis are only guilty of not giving up their homes that they worked for and died for. Just to have the Federation cede their worlds to the Cardassians? And because, in Eddington's words, left paradise, i.e. leaving the Federation. They were branded terrorists. At least they tell you about their plans for assimilation. You're more insidious. You assimilate people. And they don't even know it. You know it, Mr. Eddington. I don't give a damn what you think of the Federation, the Maquis, or anything else. Sisko's smug smile. There's something about it that stands apart from the Captain Sisko we have come to know up until this point in the series. But what is even more intriguing is his response. I don't give a damn what you think about the Federation, the Maquis, or anything else. While I understand Sisko's reasoning behind that statement, I have to question. After all, these were Federation citizens. Citizens that were abandoned by the Federation from their perspective, and by Sisko's perspective, left the Federation. Wouldn't a Starfleet officer want a greater understanding of why someone would quote, want to leave paradise but let's continue all i know is that you betrayed your oath your duty and me and if it takes me the rest of my life i will see you standing before a court martial that'll break you and send you to a penal colony where you will spend the rest of your days growing old and wondering whether a ship full of replicators was really worth it You betrayed your oath, your duty, and me. And if it takes the rest of my life, I will see you standing before a court-martial that will break you and send you to a penal colony, where you will spend the rest of your days growing old and wondering whether a ship full of replicators was really worth it. I mean, I get it. Eddington used Sisko's relationship with Cassidy Yates to steal the replicators. So that makes it personal. But does this response really seem like the Benjamin Sisko we have come to know at this point in the series? I don't think so. Eddington may have been right about something. There are at least two other parties, on Deep Space Nine alone, that have had similar thoughts. Gale owns his own moon. And I'm staring into the abyss. And the worst part of it is... My only hope for salvation is the Federation. I know precisely how you feel. I want you to try something for me. Take a sip of this. What is it? A human drink. It's called root beer. I don't know. Come on. Aren't you just a little bit curious? <sighs> What do you think? It's vile. I know. It's so bubbly and cloying and happy. Just like the Federation. But you know what's really frightening? If you drink enough of it, 
you begin to like it. It's insidious. Just like the Federation. Now you may think that I'm taking that out of context, but I really don't think I am. You may just be seeing the surface of this semi-joking interaction between Quark and Garrick. But the fact is, as you watch the show, you can see the changes in many of the characters after their long-term exposure to the Federation. From the viewer's perspective, it's hard not to see the Federation as the ultimate good guys. But culturally speaking, who are the Federation to tell the Ferengi, or the Cardassians, or the Klingons, or indeed even the Maquis, what is right and what is not? You can see this bias and lack of understanding on the part of Starfleet officers in many of the interactions between Garrick and Bashir. With all the talk of the mighty prime directive that you hear across the entire franchise, you'd think that the Federation wouldn't impose their belief system on other cultures as much as they do. From Klingon rituals involving death to Cardassian literature or Ferengi business practices, the Federation always seems to try and change the things that they don't like about other cultures. And don't even get me started about the fact that the Federation plunged the entire Alpha Quadrant into war because they would not respect the sovereignty of the Dominion's borders. Oh wait, they've done that with the Romulans? Oh, and the Klingons? And countless other races as well. So much for the almighty Prime Directive, eh? Now, I'm not trying to say that the Federation isn't an overall moral and ethical coalition. I'm just saying they seem to have issues accepting any culture that doesn't share their moral and ethical beliefs without trying to change them. Now, these are just my very brief thoughts on the subject. If you would like to have a more in-depth conversation about this, comment below and I may make more videos relating to this subject. Also, if you liked this video, hit like. If you didn't, then smash that dislike button now. And don't forget to subscribe or click that bell so you'll always know when a new video comes out. As always, I'll see you out there.